Brexit Boris Johnson wants to attract Oscar Nobel Prize winners to the island. However, this will not stop the brain drain. A few days ago, one of the reports accompanying Brexit was that Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that Oscar and Nobel Prize winners can expect an accelerated and simplified visa procedure when moving to Great Britain. Anyone who has received a prestigious award in science or in the film or music business is also very welcome in the United Kingdom, seconded the Home Secretary. He said the winners of, of uh, these standards have reached the peak of their careers and they have so much to offer for Great Britain, explained Priti Patel. The changes would give them the freedom to work in our world-leading art, science, music and film industries. This is exactly what our new immigration system was designed for, to attract the best and the brightest. It remains to be seen whether these facilitations will increase the prestige emigration desired by the government. In any case, the motivation behind it is obvious. Photos of the Premier who greets the stars with a handshake are supposed to cover up the veritable brain drain that has started since the outcome of the Brexit referendum in June 2016 and has not stopped since then. The statistics speaks for themselves. The emigration of qualified British people to the EU has increased by 30% since 2016 and applications for naturalization from British citizens in Germany have increased 20-fold. It was only recently reported that the disputes over the Northern Irish border no longer endanger the already precarious peace agreement, but that the economy is also suffering from the increased emigration of skilled Northern Irishmen. Save yourself, who can? The withdrawal movement to the continent has reached such a level that as a European in England, you, you always know at least one British person who is no longer holding anything there. But just as many Europeans have had enough of the unspeakable smear theatre that the Brexiteers have put on in recent years. Not least because they are finally fed up with everyday Europhobic racism that Brexit has promoted and which ranges from stupid sayings and simple-minded jokes to the aggressive demand that you go back to where you came from. And I hear that racist bullshit every day or I read them in the comments. Notorious optimists have long hoped for a happy ending to the Brexit drama. In vain. Johnson's landslide election victory in December 2019 with a battle cry get Brexit done was a clear signal. French, Spanish, Italian or German, at least outside of the big cities, were no longer welcome in their adopted country. This hurt those Europeans who, like many of my friends and uh, many others, see themselves as cultural mediators and uh, bridge builders between continent and island. But they were forced to make a decision between naturalization or remigration. For most of the colleagues of one German uh, journalist, the fact of becoming a subject of Her Majesty by passing English citizenship test was only a ridiculous formality. Since as Europeans you can already see the outdated concept of nationalism as an obsolete model and keep your home passport. For others, having the pistol set on their chest was the ultimate impetus to pull the ripcord, as we would say. Turning your back on the UK after decades of its so-called prime is not easy, especially in the knowledge that they are abandoning all those Euro-friendly Britons who suffered just as badly from the organized nationalistic stupidity of their countrymen. The, at the same time, quite infantile effect to let the proponents of the promised Global Britain simmer in their little English soup admittedly also plays a role. It is no coincidence that Schadenfreude is a German loan word in English. However, knowing that you are the smarter one cannot make up for the tragedy. One must not forget that it is not only the Tory government that has always pursued the exit from the European community as an ideological project. The Labour opposition, whether under Jeremy Corbyn or Keir Starmer, is critical of EU membership. This is to blame for the British electorate, who see the Brexit as the simple solution to all the problems that the neoliberal cause of New Labour and Tories in particular has brought on them over the past 40 years. How unchanged this is the case, um, despite the current scandals about the corona lies, cynical remarks and the evident corruption of the head of government, was shown by the huge victories of the Conservatives in the by-elections in the heartlands of the English working class. The will to feel like a leading great power of the old style is not, not just a pipe dream of the political class in Westminster. This comprehensive fantasy of omnipotence is probably promoted by the triumph of the English language as the lingua franca. 
No wonder that one feels like a kind of master of the world everywhere when everyone seems to speak English and it is de facto the official language of the EU. The fact that the president of the European Commission speaks perfect English does not embarrass the average Brexit supporter, but only proves that everyone should dance to the English tune. Then there are the distorted images of popular culture. Elaborate film productions or savvy BBC TV series lead the English and characters like James Bond or Sherlock Holmes to believe that they have a cultural and political superiority that is taken unchanged at face value. One should also understand Brexit as an epiphenomenon of a comprehensive de-Europeanization. Since the 1990s, especially when it comes to German, the number of school leavers studying a European foreign language has been declining both steadily and rapidly. The fact that in 2004, incidentally under a Labour government, compulsory foreign language teaching in schools was abolished acted as an effective catalyst. Since 2000, more than 50 modern languages faculties have collapsed at universities, a development that has intensified again since the decision in favor of Brexit. Organizations like the British Chamber of Commerce warn again and again that the British economy urgently needs more graduates with European language skills, but that leaves education politicians and university managers obviously cold. Not that foreign languages have a fundamentally difficult time at British universities. The demand for Arabic is constantly increasing and courses in Mandarin Chinese have overtaken the German model since 2018. The fact that the future of the United Kingdom lies beyond Europe and that there is a tendency towards political economic partnerships with populists autocrats and other political clowns such as the ruling prime minister is not only thanks to the Brexit hardliners. Rather, it now seems to be a will that is capable of holding a majority, at least within England. Views in Scotland are quite different, as the recent regional elections have shown. In any case, the ruptures and problems caused by Brexit can hardly be overlooked. Many everyday effects of Brexit, such as delivery problems and supply bottlenecks, can still be glossed over as consequences of the COVID crisis. But not forever. Divisions are growing, both within society and among the nations of the United Kingdom, which could soon be a broken kingdom. To what extent the top people for whom Boris Johnson is currently rolling out the red carpet will still be of the opinion that the country has as much to offer them as it does to it is questionable. And when this will continue, you will see that uh, there was a very, I must say, intelligent quote in uh, one of the comments under one of my videos, and I will steal that because I think it is getting more and more accurate. The Tories are not the Conservative and, and Unionist Party anymore. They are the English National Party, so the ENP. That is what they are in reality now. And if you want to stay informed, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Auf Wiedersehen.